So welcome back. Uh, we have looked at first order logic and resolution method and backward chaining and SLD resolution. And we have seen that logic can be a foundation for computing, that whatever you can do in logic, uh, you can do in computing or rather the other way around, whatever you can write in any other uh, programming language, you can do in logic. And we had said that we will look a little bit into this language of Prolog, which stands for programming in logic as the title says, uh, to give you a flavor of uh, how logic and programming is connected essentially. As you can see, the title on the slides, the name on the slides is that of S. Bhaskaran, uh, who is a software expert uh, with many years experience in industry. Uh, I will try to do as much justice as I can to his slides. For some reason, he is not able to present them. So let us begin a journey of prologue, which is programming in logic. So we will look at the programming model of prologue and some basic elements of prologue and demonstrate these elements using a, how they would look in an interpreter. Now prologue can be seen as many things. We have seen it as, we have seen already seen the perspective as a theorem prover. Uh, we have talked about deductive retrieval earlier. So we can think of it as a reductive database and a query language for querying that database. We have already started by saying that it is a knowledge representation language. And now we are also saying that it is a general purpose language, that it is a Turing complete language. Whatever you can do in any other language, you can do with prologue essentially. There is a subset of prologue called data log, which is prologue without the function. So remember that a logic language is made up of predicate symbols, function symbols and constant symbols. Data log does not use function symbols and that makes it much more efficient and in applications where you do not need function symbols, data log would be a good option. So just a recap, first order logic is a declarative language for writing logic statements and writing proofs essentially. It is like a language of mathematics. Horn logic or horn clause logic is a subset of first order logic and it has been adopted because of the fact that theorem proving is efficient in that. Prolog language is one implementation of horn clause logic and the prolog interpreter would have things like runtime extensions, external features, debug facilities, uh, uh, software or uh, uh, interface to write programs and so on, like any other programming language. You can look at some of these implementations of Prolog to practice what we are talking about. Uh, SWI Prolog is a, is a commonly uh, used uh, implementation and you can download it easily from this website uh, and install it and test it out. If you are interested in a, if you do not want to download it and if you want to use an online version, then you can try this Swish SWI Prolog which is available, which can be executed online. And you may find other implementations of uh, uh, the language essentially. So if you were to run SWI prolog as shown here, you will get a welcome message and then you can proceed essentially. Now what SWI prolog gives you is a uh, interface to ask queries of whatever is the knowledge base. How do you enter the knowledge base? The knowledge base can be entered by this command called consult a file called blocks world. What does blocks world look like? You can see on the bottom right of the screen that As you can see, it's it's a it's a it's a prolog program and we have already already introduced a little bit of the syntax. We have some statements which can be called as facts. A is on table, A is on B, B is on C, C is on table, and C is maroon. Then we have rules for defining the above relation. We have the on relation, we want to define the above relation, which is a recursive relation. We have already seen flavors of this. 
this says that x is above y if one option is that if x is on y if it is if it is on y then it must be on above y. that's the first or the base clause the recursive clause says that x is above z if x is on y and y is above z so if you remember the grandfather uh, grandparent relation we had defined earlier or the connected graph relation it's very similar in flavor to that you can also define the inverse relation you can say that x is below y if y is above x essentially so when you say consult blocks world prolog will s w a prolog will load your program and it will be ready to answer your queries so when you type in something it's treated as a query so here you have typed in a query which says is there some x which is on y is where y is also something and prolog will in this version will give you all the answers it will say x is equal to a y is equal to b that's one answer delimited by a semicolon then the second answer x equal to b and y is equal to c essentially so you can see that both these answers are uh, true for on the query on because we have said that a is on b and b is on c essentially now some versions of prolog will give you all the answers it will try to give you all the answers some version will will give you one answer and you will have to press the carriage return to get the next answer anyway that's a matter of implementation you can give a command call halt which means i am done with this session and it will terminate the session there is a very nice book on prolog it's called the art of prolog by sterling and shapiro i have used it uh, in courses where i teach logic programming and if you can get your uh, hands on it, it it's it's really a good book then there is the original paper by robert kowalski from 1979 which is titled algorithm is equal to logic plus control we have already spoken about that and there are some couple of more references that you can see uh, to which tell you more about prolog you can also look at the documentation of swi prolog so the programming model for prolog that algorithm is equal to logic plus control now our notion of of a algorithm or a program is that it's a step by step instruction for solving a problem which is closer to our notion of imperative programming a programming language like c for example would say uh, x is equal to 13 y is equal to 41 z is equal to x plus y minus 3 so you can write statements one by one and that is how the flow of control is part of the code in we have declared we have we have kind of discussed this earlier that in logic programming which is a declarative style of programming we want to separate the two parts of the algorithm the logic and the control so they provide us primitives for writing the logic components like fol for example and a runtime prepares an execution plan and executes so the execution is not in our hands uh there is a interpreter or an inference engine which does it for you now prolog as we have already said uses the horn clause subset of logic because it is more efficient and it does as we saw in the case of backward chaining it does depth first search over a tree essentially which corresponds to sld resolution for horn clauses remember we'll define horn clauses again as we go along prolog interprets horn clauses as procedures De as procedures declarations and interprets sld resolution as procedural execution i hope we will get a flavor of this as we go along some terminology a term in logic and in prolog is a reference to an object in the domain so we have defined the family of terms earlier a predicate is an atomic statement about those objects it's a relation on of some arity on those objects a horn clause is a sentence a statement about objects it includes atomic predicates and logical connectives connecting them together unification is a process that we use for matching two terms negation as we will see in the near future will be treated as negation 
as failure in prologue which means that if you cannot show that something is true then you assume that it's false and that is how prologue treats negation so it's a closed world assumption it says that if i cannot show that it is true then it must be false we will look at a procedural tool uh, called cut which is used to make programs more efficient because essentially prologue is searching over a knowledge base and to avoid some repetitive searches in many situations prologue interpreters come with this feature which is an extra logical feature in some sense called cut essentially we will look at that also later so an algorithm is logic plus control the prologue program is a logic part of the program from the user's perspective it's a knowledge base of facts and rules essentially from a programmer's perspective it is a set of procedure declarations from a maths or a logical perspective it's a conjunction of a positive set of positive definite clauses the input and output in all these procedure calls is done by unification and that's a process that we have already studied procedure parameters are local to each call so you make a call to a procedure and the parameters would be local to that if a parameter has a value or it is bound to a constant then it is treated as input unbound parameters are output parameters and the binding in a procedure call can change from one call to another essentially so we had seen this append when we talked about logic you can see that you can make a query which says if i take the list 1 plus 2 and a list containing 3 and append them together will it be the list con containing 1 2 3 so that's what this query is saying everything is an input to this because all the three variables are bound and we are just asking whether this is true or not alternatively we can ask a query that is there some x some list x and some list y which we when we append together gives us a list of 1 2 3 and if you were to run this in swi prolog it will give you a sequence of answers so a query initiates a compute computation and it is the only way to initiate computation so with this ba ba basics we'll take a short break and come back in the next video to carry on with our study of prologue